Hello, I'm Moira Alderson with the BBC News. The Election Commission in Thailand has recommended the progressive politician Pitta Limjurunrat be suspended from Parliament. He's the leading candidate to become Prime Minister following elections in May, Abigail Maudsley reports. Pitta Limjurunrat led his upstart Move Forward party to a shock election victory in May, when they took more seats than any other party. But Move Forward's ambitious reform agenda has deeply unsettled Thailand's military royalist establishment, especially its plans to amend the country's draconian Les Majesty law, which is widely seen as a tool to suppress political dissent. The Election Commission has been investigating allegations that Mr Pitar broke election rules by owning shares in a media company. North Korea has fired another long-range ballistic missile into the Sea of Japan, drawing immediate condemnation from South Korea and Japan. It was the longest ever flight for a North Korean missile. Michael Bristow is in Seoul. North Korea launched an intercontinental ballistic missile. It flew quite high in the air, 6,000 kilometres, and not that long, 1,000 kilometres. These missile launches are... They're dangerous, so that's how the Americans see them, particularly because they offer the possibility that North Korea could reach continental America. So that's why these are treated with great caution. Ukraine says it shot down 11 Russian drones launched at the capital Kiev overnight. It's the second consecutive night Russia has attacked the city. One official in the Cherkasy region southeast of Kiev said two people had been injured after a drone hit a building, causing a fire. China said it resolutely opposes what it's described as NATO's eastward movement into the Asia-Pacific region. The Chinese embassy to the European Union said that any action threatening Beijing's rights would be met with a firm response. Ian Schippers reports. The strongly worded statement is China's response to a communique issued at the NATO summit in Vilnius. The NATO heads of government said China was challenging the global order, projecting its power while remaining opaque about its strategy, intentions and military build-up. China firmly rejects this and countered that NATO had ignored basic facts and wantonly distorted Beijing's position and policies. Beijing said NATO's repeated declarations of being a nuclear alliance would serve to exacerbate tensions in the Asia-Pacific region. A report by Russia's central bank says Russians withdrew increased volumes of cash during the short-lived rebellion by the Wagner Group last month. A review noted that 100 billion rubles, or more than a billion dollars, had been taken from banks between the 23rd and the 25th of June. The bank has insisted that this did not lead to monetary problems in the country. This is World News from the BBC. Leaders of the G7 group of the world's wealthiest democracies are due to sign off on a long-term security arrangement with Ukraine. The deal would provide more defence equipment and training exercises for Ukraine's military. Ahead of the summit, the Latvian Prime Minister, Krishanis Karinch, said support for Ukraine from its allies was unwavering. It is significant to note that among NATO partners, there is a unanimous view that we need and we will continue to support Ukraine for as long as it takes until they win this war. And this is also a very clear signal to Moscow that Moscow is not creating disunity in NATO in arguments. Moscow is hardening the resolution of leaders to say we will have to continue and we will continue. The authorities in northwest Pakistan have asked the federal government to deploy the military following clashes between two groups that have killed at least 10 people. Residents have used machine guns and other heavy weapons during the fighting, which was sparked by a land dispute in the tribal district of Kurum in the Khaybar Pakhtunwa province. More than 70 people have been injured. Iran's president, Ebrahim Raisi, is in Kenya at the start of a three-day African tour. It's the first time that an Iranian president has visited Africa for more than 10 years. Mr Raisi will also be visiting Uganda and Zimbabwe. He's travelling with his diplomatic chief and a business delegation as Iran looks for new allies and commercial opportunities. Scientists in Australia say they've developed a special glue that could be used to help repair coral reefs. The biodegradable putty, which is made from plant extracts, It's designed to stabilise the rubble that's left when coral is broken by cyclones or hit by boats. This could allow it to regrow. That's the latest BBC News.